Hello there and welcome. Actually, I was going to make the second episode of my GPIB bus uh, interface design. But because I'm still waiting for a book that I ordered in a second-hand bookshop, uh, I got to do something else. So today I'm doing a teardown of a Commodore PET computer. And uh, it has some relation to the GPIB bus interface. Because the Commodore PET was the first computer that uh, everybody could kind of afford and uh, that had a GPIB bus interface built in. So uh, today I'll take a look at that and uh, once my book arrives I will uh, continue with the GPIB bus uh, design. So let's get started. I got my Commodore PET out from storage and uh, this is the 2001 series as I said earlier and it has those uh, funny um, calculator keys and uh, these are specific to the first version of the pet later versions has a proper QWERTY keyboard it has uh, also uh, a small monitor and uh, a cassette player once we open it up we'll actually see that the cassette player is a it's just a standard cassette player that just fits into a cutout in the in the metal enclosure here so we yeah, are quite a rare little beast there are a couple of connectors on the pet uh, first of all I'm not sure whether you can see it, but down here on the on the right side of the machine there's a PCB connector and these are just uh, gold headers. Um, so really a cheap solution, there's no connector as such, it's just a bare PCB with some gold fingers. Um, if we swab it or rotate it around so you can see the back, ah, this is heavy stuff. If you look at the back here, there's a power in, there's a fuse, there's an on-off switch and uh, there are more of these gold fingers and uh, for some reason there's no silk screen silk and for some reason, let's say that again, for some reason there's no silk screen here on these so I'm not quite sure what they're for um, but I guess once we open it up we will uh, get a better idea of what's going on in inside and it just... does it flip open? There we go. And uh, there's a stick here, like on an old car, to keep it open, which is really cute little design feature. And as you can see, it basically consists of a single uh, PCB and a massive power supply on the left corner there, and. Uh, some wires going up to the moni monitor here and uh, a cable going up to the keyboard here okay so I'm trying to hold the camera steady here with my left hand but as you can see uh, this thing here is the cassette player and it's just a standard cassette player that has been uh, mounted to the chassis so it's um, it's quite a simple solution and uh, when you consider this is Commodore's first computer, uh, I guess this is uh, acceptable. On the right here is the PCB with the keyboard and uh, if we just uh, tilt the camera down a bit you can see the main PCB. And I'll give you a little tour of that uh, once I get the camera steady. Okay, so here we go. Uh, this is the internal, uh, the main PCB of the Commodore PET 2001 the 1977 model which is the very first uh, Commodore product um, basically what we have is uh, over here we have a massive power supply and um, big capacitor and we have some voltage regulators with heat sinks on them and um, that takes up maybe the left one eighth of the PCB which is uh, the power supply uh, then we have here this is the main CPU this is, oops, this is the main CPU, this is a MOSTEC uh, 6502 and uh, this is uh, running at 1 MHz. The date code on all the chips are beginning of uh, 1978 so this is a pretty early version of the Commodore PET and uh, I think the serial number on the back says um, 6033 so yeah, uh, pretty pretty old stuff. Um, apart from the main CPU, we have here the read-only memory. This is a 
<coughs> another Mostec part, which is a 6540, which is a mask ROM, and uh, these are two kilobytes. That means a uh, 2k by 8. Uh, so there's total 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 14 kilobytes of RAM. And uh, as far as I know, this contains the Microsoft Basic with some additional commands for driving the I.O. ports and stuff like this. Of course, also some ROM routines for the GPIB bus, which is uh, important in our case. Then we have here, we have some uh, RAM. This is a uh, static RAM. This is another MOSTEC chip, the 6550. And uh, these contain uh, 512 bytes each. Not kilobytes, not megabytes, bytes. So this is half a kilobyte in each. And uh, there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14 of these. No, that's wrong. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. There are 16 of each, giving a total of 8 kilobytes of uh, memory. If we just continue, we go down to the back here. There are some chips here, which are... Another must take chip, a 6520, which is basically a parallel ports, and uh, they are driving those uh, gold connectors at the back here. And um, yeah, they are also driving uh, our GPIB interface, uh, which should connect to one of these. The last major chip that we have on this board is this one here, which is a uh, MOSTEC 6522, and um, that is a versatile interface adapter which is basically some interval timers and the serial port and also a couple of I.O. Uh, and that drives the little board over here and um, I guess these are for joysticks and uh, some analog inputs and stuff uh, where you can use the timer for that and the last part of the PCB is basically this big piece here in the middle which is uh, consists of two RAM chips for video memory and um, the video memory size is one kilobyte uh, so that's a very small video memory um, and apart from that we have a lot of TTL gates that will generate all the timing uh, for controlling the CRT the clock speed of this board is 8 megahertz coming from the crystal down here I'm not sure if you can see it there's an 8 megahertz crystal down here and um, this will drive surely the video interface and uh, then it will be divided down by 8 to get 1 megahertz for this uh, main CPU here and uh, yeah that's basically it for the entire uh, computer and of course these days you can have everything like this in a single little uh, chip uh, but uh, in those days this was the way to do it and um, Maybe in the future I'll show you some of my own designs from uh, around that period and uh, they are quite similar to what we have here uh, apart from uh, the fact that I was using Z80, the Zilog CPU uh, for most of my designs um, but otherwise this PCB is uh, all MOSTEC and um, I've been googling some of the data sheets for these MOSTEC parts and the MOSTEC parts came out in 1977 uh, which is also the date code on my PCB so yeah I, it looks like this board was uh, basically a demo a demo board for the Mostec chipset and uh, it happened to be a really big success for Commodore uh, much bigger than what they initially thought and uh, later chips from Mostec includes the uh, video adapters that will in include all this uh, logic here into a single chip so yeah together with the metal enclosure here this is uh, actually a good first uh, start for a small computer company in those days uh, obviously uh, you don't expect from the beginning a very big uh, sales potential so you will just do a metal enclosure which can be done one off you don't have to spend money on plastic molding and tooling and stuff like this so yeah this is the first uh, Commodore computer really and a very nice one to boot this one unfortunately is not working uh, but I will uh, be repairing it sometime in the future when I get round to it got a lot of things on my plate right now so all these repair videos will be later so yeah that's it really I thought while we were waiting for my GPIB bus interface book I would uh, show you the inside of the Commodore PET 2001 
which is one of the first commercially available computers with a GPIB bus interface. And actually in my first video about the GPIB bus, I was showing you some Rode und Schwarz equipment. And actually Rode und Schwarz was uh, OEMing the Commodore pad for some time uh, for controlling the equipment that I have here. And uh, they call it the PPC, the Rode und Schwarz PPC. A couple of years later, Rode und Schwarz made their own GPIB bus controller uh, equipment. And um, I'll have a video coming up uh, shortly about that one as well. So yeah, uh, thank you for watching and uh, see you again soon for my next episode on the GPIB bus.